Jazzland, later known as Six Flags New Orleans, operated for only five years. It has now been abandoned for over double that. This is the tragic story of this short-lived theme park. It's time to play. Six Flags New Orleans. It's playtime. Jazzland was not the first amusement park in New Orleans. Moving on out to Pontchartrain Train Beach, got my baby by my side. Moving on out. After one failed attempt already, Henry Bat was convinced an amusement park would work in the area, even though his first one had failed. Trying a new location on the east side of New Orleans, he opened his second version of the park, Pontchartrain Beach, in 1939. This somewhat modern park with a wooden roller coaster, multiple flat rides and entertainment offerings included early performances from Elvis Presley. At the time, only a portion of New Orleans visitors were even able to visit the park since separate but equal segregation was in effect. The alternative African-American Lincoln Beach was also opened in 1939. Modelled after the Pontchartrain complex, though not quite as grand, after New Orleans was desegregated in 1964, Lincoln Beach closed and Pontchartrain was open to all, continuing to remain popular and growing in size until the late 1970s. Popularity did start to decrease though and it closed for good in 1983. Pontchartrain Beach Amusement Park may be closing. Its fond memory will remain. The rides are being torn down to make way for a condominium development. The mid-80s hit the east area of New Orleans hard, with one in eight people becoming unemployed. This was the highest rate in the country. New Orleans East began to be known for its high crime and as an area to avoid. Despite this, in 2000, Alpha Smart Parks, which was later absorbed by Palace Entertainment, who were known for running water parks and smaller amusement arcades, made the decision to open a new amusement park 15 miles from the tourist hub of the city in New Orleans East. The park itself was actually owned by Park Renudius, an international entertainment operator based in Madrid, the same company who owned Movie Park in Germany and Kennywood, among many others. The area had poor transportation links, high crime rates and large urban decay, yet plans to build the park went ahead for $135 million and construction began in early 1999. Spend the day at Jazzland Theme Park where the fun is at full blast. I gotta do that again! Jazzland in New Orleans on I-10 at the I-510 exit is filled with thrills for the whole family. Serious rides. 30 incredible rides and spectacular entertainment. This is great. Come for the thrills. Stay for the fun at Jazzland. Open daily at 10 a.m. Billed as the South's premier theme park, Jazzland opened on May 20, 2000. Inside, you found six theme sections, containing 30 rides. As you entered, you found yourself in Jazz Plaza, home of the Emporium and Jazz Mall gift shops. The park used a popular layout based around a small lake. The first zone you found on your left was Cajun Country. Cajun Country featured Lafitte's Pirate Ship, Cypress Plunge Log Ride, the Gator Bay Airboats, the Muskrat Scrambler, which was a wild mouse roller coaster, and the Cajun Pirate Show. Continuing around, you found yourself in Pontchartrain Beach, a tribute to the original amusement park in East New Orleans. Inside this zone was the Zydeco Scream, billed as the most popular roller coaster type in theme park, Pontchartrain Flyer, where you could steer the flow of your double winged flyer 10 stories up, beach bang up bumper cars, the Big Easy, which was a 90-foot Ferris wheel, a Fabry boomerang called Dizzy Lizzy, and Sonic Slam and Bayou Blasters. One launching you up 185 feet, while the other slowly took you up before dropping you. The next and largest section of the park was Mardi Gras, with the highlight attraction of the park being the Mega Zeph. Mm -hmm. 
a custom designed 4,000 foot long steel structure with wooden track roller coaster, taking its name from the Zephyr wooden roller coaster from the original Pontchartrain Beach. Originally it was going to be a recreation of this old coaster, but a new, more thrilling ride was designed. It used a steel support structure to help avoid termites and be able to withstand hurricane strength winds. The ride reached speeds of 57 miles per hour with a 110 foot drop. It was billed as the park's signature ride and one of the premier wooden coasters in the country, at least according to the park anyway. Jazzland in New Orleans hasn't been open a week yet, but one ride there is turning heads all over the country. It should come as no surprise. It's the largest and only wooden roller coaster in the state. Other rides in this area included Voodoo Volcano, a Chance Morgan Inverter, Spillway Splash Out, the Sky Coaster, King Chaos, Crazy Crew, Mad Rex, Zydeco Zinger, a Carousel, and Jocko's Mardi Gras Madness, a unique interactive dart ride built by Sally Corporation capturing the essence of New Orleans. The final area was Kid Carnival, which featured multiple children's rides, including some which were smaller versions of the larger ones found throughout the park, and it also included a family roller coaster called Rex's Rail Runner. Some of the entertainment offerings were a dance floor featuring a Cajun dining area, the show Jazz Jazz Jazz, costume characters called the Swamp Critters for children to meet, as well as street acts, nightly parades, and a ski show on the lake. So as you can see in its opening year, the park offered quite a large amount of attractions for everybody. A fun New Orleans jazz inspired atmosphere and great food for those who visited. It also played tribute to the history of the area and the amusement parks of old. All of the elements for a successful park were in place from the first year. The only issue was the park was not successful. It was struggling financially from the start. Projected to bring in 1 million people a year, just over half of that actually visited. And most of the blame pointed towards the lack of marketing funds they had available to promote the park. Because of this, they did not bring in guests from further away and many of the locals had no interest or could not afford to visit. Just two years after opening, the park was on the verge of bankruptcy. At the end of 2001, the 140 acre park was put up for sale and quickly sold to Six Flags in March 2002 for $22 million. Six Flags invites you to experience our newest world-class theme park. As part of the deal, they were required to sign a 75-year lease with the City of New Orleans, obligating the company to run an amusement park on the land for that length of time. Jazzland operated under the same name in 2002, before Six Flags began implementing large upgrades to the park for the 2003 season. The park would now be known as Six Flags New Orleans. Some of these changes included Jazz Plaza being renamed to Main Street Square. They would address one of the complaints from the previous park and add more shade for guests around the walkways. A new DC Comics Superheroes Adventure Zone was added between Cajun Country and Pontchartrain Beach. Rides in this area were mostly rehomed from Thrill Valley in Japan, which had closed in 2002. The new rides were Catwoman's Whip, Joker's Jukebox, Lex Luthor's Invertatron, as well as the Gotham City Hall Theatre, which would have a Batman stunt show. The largest addition, though, was Batman the Ride. Previously opened in 1995 as Gambit out in Japan, this B&M inverted coaster themed around the 1989 film was a mirrored version of the original Batman the Ride at Six Flags Great America. The children's area of the park also gained a new theme as the Looney Tunes adventure, with each ride being renamed to fit this new theme. <laughs> Pirates 4D in the theater was also changed to SpongeBob SquarePants The Ride. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! Good! In you go! 
A second new roller coaster was added in the Mardi Gras section of the park called the Jester, one of the only two Vacoma hurricane coasters ever created. It was relocated from Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This time though, the coaster would run backwards. Unfortunately though, a different kind of hurricane was about to change the fate of Six Flags New Orleans. Six Flags had put huge amounts of money into promoting the park, with a massive marketing campaign nationwide. Despite this though, the New Orleans park remained near the bottom of Six Flags parks for profits. Many reports came in that the park was an ill-conceived concept in the wrong location that should never have been built in the first place. The company were in it for the long haul though, and plans began for a water park. Six Flags planned to announce it at the end of August 2005, but that would never happen. As its winds reach 115 miles an hour, Katrina turns into a Category 3 hurricane, with New Orleans in its sights. In late August 2005, the park was operating on weekends only, closing on August 21st as normal and planned to reopen the following weekend. This week though, a catastrophic storm was brewing over the Bahamas, which emerged into the Gulf of Mexico on August 26th before reaching Category 5 status shortly afterwards. Waves of water are already washing over parking lots in the greater New Orleans area. Some of the first signs of the approach of Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina was going to be devastating. The decision was made to keep the park closed over the weekend to prepare for the storm. The words closed for storm appeared on the sign outside the park, which would never reopen again. Mayor Ray Nagin issued the first ever mandatory evacuation in the city's history. At the last minute, Hurricane Katrina took a change in path to the east, sparing the city of New Orleans a direct hit. As dawn breaks, Katrina's wind speeds slow back down to a Category 4 hurricane. It makes landfall at 6 a.m., 60 miles southeast of New Orleans. The levee system which protected New Orleans from storm surges were breached over 50 times. Reported after as flawed and collapsing because they were junk, water poured in, filling the city and causing the death of thousands. Six Flags New Orleans is now a water park, swamped with eight feet of it. You can't put it in words, really. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's just uh, unbelievable. Six Flags New Orleans sat on some of the lowest ground in the city, right by one of the most devastating levee breaches. The whole park sat submerged underwater after the park's drainage pumps failed during the storm and the park sat in corrosive flood water up to seven feet high for over a month. Initial investigator reports stated the park's buildings were 80% demolished. The only attraction reported to be somewhat intact was Batman the Ride due to its elevated platform and corrosion-resistant support structure. On July 1st, 2006, after completing its damage assessments, the park was reported as a total loss. With the low performance of the park within the chain, Six Flags had no reason to rebuild. The company were now in negotiations to try and get out of their 75-year lease they had entered back in 2002. The New Orleans mayor, though, planned to hold Six Flags to this lease agreement and force them to rebuild, and due to the terms of the lease, they would be forced to rebuild on the same land, but only to the value of the insurance money Six Flags had received. That amount was deemed as $32.5 million for the destroyed assets, but they had only received $11.5 million. In early 2007, Six Flags planned to sue their insurer for the remaining amount. As early as December 2006, Six Flags began to remove some of the park's rides and assets for restoration and distribution to its other parks against the opposition of many. They removed Batman the Ride and restored it before relocating it to Six Flags Fiesta, Texas under the new name Goliath. In addition, they also removed anything which could be recovered from the site. Bayou Blaster and Sonic Slam were later relocated to Great Escape as Sasquatch. Roadrunner Express was removed and taken to Magic Mountain in 2009. The rest though remained and sat abandoned. In September 2008, the city of New Orleans and Six Flags finally reached a settlement to end their 75-year lease. Six Flags, who at the time were under bankruptcy protection, were fined $3 million and a portion of its insurance settlement if they were to recover more than $65 million and ordered to immediately vacate the premises. Six Flags now had nothing to do with the previously failing park, which may never have even been turned around into a success they had hoped. The Six Flags entrance sign was removed and after just a few years, Six Flags had left the park behind. 
since many proposals for the abandoned site have been seen, including an upscale mall and several new theme park versions, including a Nickelodeon version, none of which have came to be. The same issues that the failing original park had would still exist with New Orleans East, which is one of the slowest areas to recover since Katrina. The site was used multiple times over the years for film development and has been featured in Percy Jackson, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and even Jurassic World, among multiple others that are filmed at the abandoned park. The park has also been the target of many urban explorers and it has been considerably vandalised but the remains of Jazzland have sat abandoned with its slowly decaying coasters and eerie atmosphere dominating the area. Parts of this Six Flags Park can still be found around the US at their other parks, yet 13 years later the remains of Jazzland still sit abandoned in East New Orleans. The storm devastated the lives of many and the city continues to redevelop to this day. The life of this park is tragic, but it pales in comparison to the devastation caused by Hurricane Katrina to the lives of thousands. Jazzland though, now abandoned by Six Flags, remains another casualty of one of the most devastating storms in US history. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Extinct. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to join us on the expedition, follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming expeditions, and make sure to let me know in the comments below where you would like to see covered. We will see you next time.